do you th- what do you think as a person who's hired and managed people? Like, what do you, if you were looking for someone who maybe has never knocked doors before, what is the quality or the trait or characteristic that you kind of think is most uh, important that you look for when potentially hiring somebody? Yeah. So there's a really good question. I think everyone should ask is tell me about your most recent success, successful experience and you'll get all kinds of answers. <laughs> so one guy's like, Hey, uh, I'm 90 days off drugs and, uh, you know, whatever. So, or someone says I was in the, I was in the pro NFL and I got hurt and you learn really quickly who you're sitting across from. Um, or some guy was a, a pro athlete and, um, you know, or, or a junior Olympian. Some people just finished grad school, but learning what they're proud of tells you a lot about the tenacity of this person and the level of their achievement that, that they consider a achievement. Um, because what we're looking for is grit and tenacity, the ability to withstand the storm that's thrown at them. And, and we want to know, I want to know specifically the level of perseverance that this guy is going to give us whenever we put our time and, and sweat equity into this person, what kind of return are we going to get from this guy? Because um, we have limited resources as far as who we can train up to become a professional in this field. And our resources are chewed up by the wrong kind of people. And so I think we've gotten very um, good at filtering who we're bringing into our culture and our industry. We want to fill the room with all stars, with people that are going to be, uh, that have very high potential. Um, I love people that have been athletes in their past, wrestlers, especially um, football players. Those guys are phenomenal. Um, and then the other thing I like to ask them is, is um, it's, I, I don't try to sell them necessarily on the job. I say, Hey, just so you know, this is, we have a lot of people that walk out of this thing that doesn't work out for them. And here's why they hate X, Y, and Z about this job and they can't take it. And then I just let them answer to that and they'll say, well, I don't think that's me because, or, you know, whatever it is, but I want to understand what's underneath the skin. Cause everyone wants to come in and sell you and be a facade and make you feel like, um, they're worthy to be on the team. They want to be picked, but they'll never show up the next day. And you think you just did this amazing interview and you just sold them super hard, but really I think you should do the opposite. Don't try to sell people, sell your company on what you guys are doing and what you have and let them kind of come to the table and say, here's why I feel qualified to be here. And here's what I could, would contribute. Um, and so I think flipping that don't grab it. Yeah. It reminds me of, um, I spoke with solar Lily, uh, solar Lily uh, a few weeks ago or a month ago, I guess time flies. Um, and I remember like she said, we were talking about another guy who was Jonathan Bernasso. And, but we were talking about how the way she said, the way he sells and the way that he's successful is because he plays like not necessarily hard to get, but almost like indifferent with the homeowner. Like, uh, yeah, like this is, these are the number, like this is how the process works. This is what you're going to be able to get. And, uh, basically it's option A or option B and no matter what, I mean, I'm, I'm cool either way. Like basically like playing hard to get in the way that the homeowner feels like they have to qualify to them. Like they're the ones that want to prove it. And it sounds like you kind of are the same way with hiring. And the other thing I like about what you've said, uh, on two things that we've talked about so far is you're not wasting time on bad doors or you're not, and you're not wasting time on poor candidates where a lot of people in solar seem to go for the, it's a numbers game approach and they will just knock every single door as many doors as possible and they'll hire 50 people and not provide them with any training. And then they know that 48 of them are going to quit. Um, so it definitely is, uh, refreshing, I guess, it, compared to a lot of people that I see in the industry. What do you can th- I tell you? The, can I tell you the worst people to hire? Yes. That's not just, there you go. You go for it. Um, people that have experience in the industry that want the world. You mean the people that ask for the, the lowest possible red line and they ask for, uh, well, they yeah, want, well, they, they want, that want they want things up front. front. They want things up front before they've added value to your company and they want to use their clout from their experience in the past. 
and those guys suck. They flop every time. You're chasing around your money. You're asking them when they're going to perform. You're finding out they're hopping around at other companies. Like those guys are uh, the worst. So yeah, that's what I, I remember when I used to hire people in both the fitness world and I also worked in like city government for parks and recreation for a while. And I remember the you always like look at the resumes and I know solar companies really don't care about resumes or at least most don't. Um, but you would see these people that like have a different job like every two months and it would just be like, yeah, that's like, I, I don't even want to sit down with them because if they do win me over, I know it's not going to work out. Um, yeah. and, uh, you see that in solar too, are these guys that are always hopping from one company to the next looking for that perfect situation. And, uh, and Kyle, when, you, when these, sorry to interrupt you, when these guys get hired, or if you guys, just a tip, if you guys are interviewing with another solar company that you want to hit your wagon to, don't tell them how everyone screwed you or how, um, you know, these guys did you wrong and these guys did you wrong and this guy did you wrong because I have never been screwed in the industry. I have never not been paid what I'm owed. I've been doing this for 17 years and I've made very good decisions and I follow through with my word and my commitments. I don't have those stories to go share. And the people that share those stories are going to be sharing that story about you someday when they're sitting at someone else's office, getting recruited about, you know, something they failed here. And so instead of following through with their commitments, they're going to make you the bad guy. And they're going to go keep telling that story and telling that story. So I've noticed that's a, that's a red flag to me when people come in and they have all these stories to tell about everyone that's done them wrong. I'm, I'm very leery about those people. Cause it's almost always uh, turned out to be the, the same story when they've yeah, been from us. I, I find it extremely impressive that you've never been screwed in this industry, by the way. Um, it does show that you, you make smart decisions cause I have been screwed before, but one of the things that I've realized is, um, are you a fan of Jocko Willink? I don't even know, I don't who know who that is. No? no. Okay. So he's an ex Navy seal, but he has a book called extreme ownership and he has, oh, I do know the book. Yeah, he had a book called Extreme Ownership. He has a podcast. He's on Joe Rogan. He's a really cool dude. But one of the things that I, when I read the book recently, was you realize it's like even if someone did do you wrong, like you were volun you were in that situation because of yourself. So like like you were saying, doing the research or missing the red flags or whatever it was, you put yourself in that position. And so you can blame them. But at the end of the day, the only person who really has ownership over that was you, because at this, at some point, that's what we all need to do is we all need to take more ownership of, uh, the position that we're in. So if we get screwed, okay, what did we do wrong? That put us in a position to get screwed. What can we do to prevent that? And, um, I think once you start to do that, it just kind of, you, it's, it's, very it's enlightening in a way like you're like you feel you start to realize that you do have control over everything um but it's also just freeing because your mindset has shifted so you're not just blaming everybody else for everything that goes wrong you figure out that you're in control and you can f make sure that it doesn't happen again um because and, and to your point so some of these guys that tell these sob stories <clears throat> if they were to live through my experiences, they would probably say, Tyler McAllister has been screwed or I've been screwed. <laughs> but those experiences that I've had in the past, I've looked at them and like you said, I've taken ownership. I'm like, well, I signed that contract and I didn't read it. That's not what we said was gonna happen, but that's what was in there and that's my fault. And so, you know, here's this, or you know, this this is the, the response from that. So I wasn't screwed, I just didn't, you know, I learned from that and so okay, moving forward, I'm gonna make sure X, Y, and Z and you just learn from it and you move on. Yeah. You don't use it as a crutch. And you it's also, I think one of the things too is, um, you see it within the Facebook groups is people always wanna, there's so much drama and it's entertaining, sure. <laughs> but it is a, a bunch of nonsense really. And it's like, when you're the one complaining about somebody else, even if that whatever you're saying is 100% true, it doesn't, do you any favors to actually like be the one shouting at on the rooftops? Everyone, fifty percent. Everyone's sitting there listening and watching, and they're making these judgments on you that might not even be accurate. But because you're trying to bring it out there and make it public, it's it's just not a very professional look. And uh, it, it makes you look small. 
it makes you look smaller than you you're burning i don't know about burning but you're uh i guess you are burning potential bridges in the future that maybe you will want to c cross one day and the fact that they remember that and associate that with you is going to hurt those chances yeah 100 percent. so and, and because solar is a small industry i mean it's not like there's um these yeah, but, but it's also sorry just to add into that kyle it's, it's when you see people looking backwards a lot like that's that's what's happening when these people are coming in and airing all of their grievances they're stuck looking in the rear view mirror and these people aren't someone that you necessarily see moving forward um, the people that are doing really big things significant things there's so much movement in their life that the things that happen are a byproduct of taking massive action and they're not looking in the rear view mirror and they're not airing those grievances they're just they're moving forward because what's ahead is way more important and way valuable than what's behind and it just again it makes people look small when they air their grievances on little things it's like my guy's stuck yeah and i like going back to tying it all into the question that you ask with people is asking them about their recent successes or recent failures like when you get people talking about that that allows you to identify not necessarily specific skills that they have but it kind of identifies helps you to identify how they view themselves in the story are they always the victim or are they all are they always being victimized are they is there other people that are that are responsible for their past uh, losses or but they're in charge of their past successes and when you ask questions like that you kind of get uh, a peek into their mind and uh, that's important when we're looking at uh, successful sales guys but also the other thing about solar is you want someone who's going to be there for the long haul you don't want someone who you're going to put all your effort into and they're going to be at a different company in six months and uh it's uh yeah it's that's part of the fun i guess about solar so you're running your company different than a lot of people that i know because a lot of people just literally hire as as many people as possible tell me about your hiring process are you always hiring people do you hire them in batches do you hire them one at a time like what is your, your process like for hiring and onboarding somebody yeah, so we have a recruiting service. So every um, Monday and every Wednesday, we have about 10 to 15 people that show up in our sales office from a recruiting service. We'll do a, um, a mass preliminary presentation, and then we'll kind of whittle down people that don't feel like this is in line with what they're looking for. So they kind of leave, and then the people left over want to be interviewed by leadership managers or owners of the company, and we'll take them and interview them one by one. So that's... Um, a very different experience than someone that's coming into our company from another company or uh, you know a friend of one of the sales guys that's working with us they come in so those are very different experiences um, the people that come in to these recruiting meetings usually don't have any background with solar or door-to-door -door. and so we are looking for people that are uh, that they have the attributes that we're looking for people that are tenacious people that have grit people that are more entrepreneur minded and people that aren't looking for the nine to five, they're, you know, the fact that we're not gonna offer them health insurance, they're not freaking out because that doesn't, that doesn't come with the, the territory. Um, and then, um, so for the people that do want to, that say that they wanna be a part of our company from those meetings, we don't actually onboard them until they're willing to go out with one of our closers or one of our uh, lead setters for three days because within those first three days, they'll usually drop off and never come back. And last year we spent 20 plus thousand dollars on uniforms of people that ended up never coming to work with us. And so, and then you talk about the time consuming aspect of giving HR a task to go onboard this person for us trying to follow up and get documentation for these people that really have no interest in working with us. So we wanna weed those people out really quickly. Um, and then, one of the things I love Tony Robbins says, is good salesmen aren't made, they're found. And I kind of find that that's really true. A lot of people that have risen up to be significant in the industry, we give them a vehicle to exercise their abilities in, and we give them uh, steering, coaching, and guidance to really help these people shine. But we are not turning someone from from something they're not into what they are today. Really, people are... Uh, discovered in a way in this industry and so we want to really 
look for those kinds of people that we can help rise up and, and shine and be impactful. In our, and all the, these people are looking for is a vehicle to go and do that. So thank you guys. Thank you so much for watching this clip from the solar growth show. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, while you're here, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Every little thing helps my channel to grow, to help more people, and to make this industry a, a better place. So uh, I appreciate you watching this, and remember, full clips or all clips and all episodes can be viewed right here on this YouTube channel. And then, in addition to that, make sure to check out the Facebook group that we have over on Facebook, Solar Growth, um, and we get more value over there. So until next time, let's go out there and uh, let's grow.